Do you know what whites are doing wrong? It is surprisingly easy to figure out, at least in hindsight. All we need to understand is the line between good and evil. The rest is easy, though we ought to grasp two significant points. First is that the issue is not reserved to Caucasians. The second is that the issue is not one of ignorance. Whites at least would rather be destroyed than do what is right. A third point could be made. The issue is racial. But the problem is, our conception of race is a large part of the problem. There are two races of man. In this sense the race motif is accurate, but race is not linked to biology. There are no physical features that are typical of the human race or the racial subsets. The race war minorities want to start is a diversion. A race war based on physical characteristics is an absurdity that only the marginally insane could entertain. However, the manipulation has been successful enough to cause a lot of whites to embed themselves deeper in this false dichotomy. But even the race war engineered by minorities is not as it is often portrayed. The one side is not all whites nor is the other side composed of all other racial groups. There are many who are visible minorities who agree with the ideals encapsulated by white culture. But of course, this was never about skin colors or genetics. To understand the real issue, we need to start with the idea of right and a wrong and good and evil. If we cannot agree there are truths and lies it is impossible to begin a seeking after it. A forensic audit cannot be done on whites unless there is a culprit to be found. There has to be a guilty party or agent to have a successful audit. This is why we need to be able to exclude factors such as intersectional factors, race, education, wealth or other things, which cannot be isolated. If we project an outcome from a particular source, then we need to be able to establish a causal connection between the proposed cause and the projected effect. If deepening melanin levels causes us to do increasing levels of harm, then the wrong we do would need to be related inversely to the whiteness of our skin. But this is not a plausible scenario. On the other hand, if we are faced with a basket of factors or some juxtaposition of different elements, this is not something all whites would have in equal proportions or at levels that would explain recent events. But herein is the bigger problem. If we can forensically audit the history of whites and discern a novel social feature that leads us to do really stupid things, we would then have to explain where this factor originated and why it was adopted by such a substantial number of whites. However, we assume that the more likely case is that the issue, while a distinctly a white one is not truly a white problem. Correlation, in other words, does not necessitate causation. What we look for is a factor found predominantly in white populations without it being associated with the white race, in a biological sense. However, it is impossible to draw a line around the problem area without establishing if there is a line to be drawn. But, going back to the original argument, if there is no good and evil, there is no human intelligence. It is logically necessary for there to be an absolute right and wrong if there are right and wrong solutions. Even when we do wrong, we need to know wrong is being done. No one seriously argues killing is a good. We can and do argue about when killing is justified. But we know it is not always justified and what is more, we know if we do kill, we are going to have to explain why we thought it necessary to kill another person. We all know, anytime someone kills another human, the killing has to be explained. The first assumption made is that the killing was potentially wrong. Only when the mitigating factors are introduced is it determined that special dispensation can be given. Each case of homicide has to be considered on its own merits. 
Stealing is also wrong, even though there is a lot of pressure from progressives to qualify if not excuse it. The argument is made by progressives that under certain conditions, stealing is not really stealing. Though no doubt to the victim it still feels like being robbed. But stealing can take many forms. It can range from stealing the common land, as when parks are taken over by the homeless, to the outright theft of private property for private benefit. However, even in the clearest case of wrongdoing, there are those who justify it. At minimum, the criminal has, in his own mind, reconciled the clear moral wrong of the action with a qualifying principle. It may be that the action is wrong in the world's eyes, but for the criminal, the act was excusable. This article is not arguing whites are morally superior to other groups. But something had to take place to give rise to white culture which, for the most part, is far superior to most, and no worse than the remainder. Yet, the very thing we did right was obviously the wrong thing to do. Whites are less tribal than the competition. We stopped the socialization of the common land whereas most places still think in terms of socialized ownership. People cannot improve their lot because any surplus created tends to be thought of as public property. It might seem to be racist to claim whites are generally more honest, but it is a logical assumption to make. If whites engaged in the socialization activities of tribal peoples, they would have spent more time in rapin and far less in capitalization activities. Whites were willing to work for what they got. These things correlate with successful entrepreneurship, whether we talk of individuals or nations. We trusted one another, not that everyone was trustworthy, but it is a matter of percentages. One could make deals with the assumption the agreement would be honored. But of all of the things that may have helped whites succeed, nothing is more significant than our tolerance, which suggests whites, more than any race on earth, accepts racial differences. We are tolerant of the foibles of others as well as biological differences. Tolerance permitted a higher level of faith than those who were less tolerant. These are logical claims. If people are not tolerant, they would be subject to strife. If they were not tolerant, they would not have the faith in each other that would permit trust and cooperation to flourish. The evidence of trust and tolerance is in the business, military and scientific successes of whites. These are not successes denied to other groups, but the history of peoples suggests whites, despite their lack of numbers, came out on top, historically. This need to be explained, and as much as some would prefer to explain it in negative terms, at some point there has to be a positive factor in play. Whites had to have done something right, something that was available to others but was embraced by whites predominantly. As no individual is responsible for white success and no group is composed of perfect persons, the coordination of whites suggests there was a higher level of faith exhibited in white culture than elsewhere. But his essay is not written to explain in detail why whites came out on top in the historic struggle of groups, but to explain our failure. The good is given only so we can explain the bad. The things that led to our rise led to our fall. Tolerance is good only when it exists within a culture in which trust is justified. To be tolerant of enemy actions is suicidal. But this is where our habits have taken us. We carried our tolerance and forgiveness into enemy territory. Yet, there will still be those who remind us that Jesus forgave those who crucified him even while on the cross. And therein is another source of error. Jesus forgave those who did him wrong. Yet, there is no indication he ever forgave Judas. The phrase he used was forgive them for they know not what they do. This is not forgiveness for those who enter into sin willingly and in full knowledge of the evil they do, 
as for example as is the case with Satan and the fallen angels. It is one thing for a friend to do you wrong and you forgive them. It is another for a group to systematically destroy your culture and forgive them. You have no right to be tolerant of evil. To be tolerant of evil is to betray the good. Whites are mindlessly expressing faith in peoples and cultures that want their destruction and being tolerant of the evidence. That proves their trust is misplaced. We are like the beaten spouse who continues to make excuses for her abuser. Tolerance is another term for charity. We are to be charitable and to forgive where we can. But tolerance of evil is not being charitable. We can only be tolerant, forgiving and charitable when there is a chance we could be wrong. It is like the system of justice that says we only condemn when the preponderance of evidence convicts the accused. If the plaintiff does not have a clear and convincing path forward, it behooves the plaintiff to drop the case and give the accused the benefit of the doubt. But there is no path to being tolerant of murder or other evils. Yet, whites have taken a weakness and made it a strength. Like a victim of abuse we have lied that if we can endure the abuse for a little longer, the abuser will learn to appreciate us and will abuse us no more. This is apathy, not charity. Tolerance is our greatest weakness. It is one thing to be tolerant of those who try and fail, it is another thing to be tolerant of enemy action. We need to stop making excuses for our failure to do nothing in the face of infiltration and enemy action. If the intent is not to help, then it is to destroy. If the overall path is not towards mutual betterment, then one side wants the other side destroyed. Whites are making excuses for their enemies for one reason. It is not because whites are such good persons, it is because we have been taught to fear. We not only do not trust others, we no longer even trust ourselves. The excuses we make for others is so we do not have to make excuses for our apathy. If no wrong is being done to us we do not have to explain why we are not doing anything about it. What whites are doing wrong is avoiding the mirror when we look for reasons for what is going on. We are the problem. Our inaction is the problem. Our willingness to avoid condemning others so we do not have to condemn ourselves is the problem. We need to start going to the mirror in search of the cause of our problems. And when we get around to trying to find the solution to these problems, both are there, in the mirror.